trying everything we can do to change the system, and we're getting vilified in, in the newspapers and so forth. And he's coming to our door like on a daily basis, and we look outside our window every day, and there's this car parked out there. And we know he's in that car, because we've seen him in that car, we walk by that car, you know, and there he is, and he'll even knock and acknowledge us that he's there. Finally, he just got real pissed one day, I remember, and we, you know, the you know, two of us came running out, uh, screaming at him with a bat, you know, and chased him out of the neighborhood, because fuck it, you know? Like, what else do we have to lose? I don't give a shit anymore at this point. Like, you're either going to do something to change the system, or you're not. And so at that point, we had to make a decision, okay, are we going to stop putting up these communiques? No. Are we going to let them harass us? No, we're going to do whatever we can to do to stop them, you know? And so it just kept going from there, you know, uh, we'd see them at the store, you know, and so forth, and all this stuff. But still, we got communiques in the mail, you know, or, or over the email, however we got them, and we put them out, and we kept getting more and more coverage over and over again, and, and it just kept escalating. And they wanted us to stop, and we weren't about to stop. What's the point? If we stop, then it's just going to be more suffering, there's going to be just more continual struggle for everybody everywhere on a daily basis, it's only going to keep going. And even if we do our best, maybe that won't stop, but you've got to do something. If you ain't doing nothing, then you ain't doing nothing. You know, that's all there is to it. So, finally, for once, it was like something was happening. So, you know, so fuck the repression, we don't really care. Bring it on, like, we got to do what we got to do to make change. And that was the mentality that we had to adapt at that point in order to keep going. So we kept going, and ELF got more and more popular. They burnt down Vail. Um, they kept burning down more and more places, and now I guess they're up to like a hundred million dollars in damages, or over that, or something, uh, through their actions. And so, you know, as this escalated, um, we started getting grand jury subpoenas, and there were basically two of us that were doing this this ELF press office with me and a, a fellow Craig, who's a friend of mine, and. Uh, for whatever reason, I guess I was quicker, uh, whatever, quicker running out the back door. I was, I was able to avoid subpoenas a little bit easier than he was. Um, so he kept getting subpoenaed to grand juries, and I kept running out the back door. I kept hiding in the basement until they stopped knocking. You know, and that's just the way that I dealt with it. But we get grand jury subpoenas, and if you go to the grand jury, I'm sure everyone, or most people here know about what happens at a grand jury, you know, you can get put away for nothing, basically, for, for not saying anything. So it's a, it's a situation you want to avoid. So there's some more state repression that happened. Five minutes. Um, but you just kept going. You know, what else are you going to do? And the only thing that, okay, and then, and then September 11th, okay. And then, sorry, I'm all over the place. I came here just, you know, with no notes and nothing, as usual. But, uh, so then, we decided, we got to this point, we're doing a lot of reading, we're doing a lot of studying groups like the Black Panthers, Black Liberation Army, different, like, revolutionary groups around the country. We were like, you know, what the ELF is doing is great, but we got to step it up. Like, this is not really what's going to change the whole world. We need to change the system. We need to focus on changing the system. So we wanted to step up to that level. And so on September 5th of 2001, a few days just before the, uh, the, the big September 11th or whatever, uh, we decided that we'd resign from our positions as, as spokesperson for ELF and start organizing what eventually became ERISA, which we're involved in now. And, um, but then September 11th happened, and it was like this big blackout in the media, like no one's talking about anything, and we weren't in the media all the time, but we were in there a lot, at least it was a voice. So it was like someone's gotta come in there and start saying something against all these American flags that they're waving on the back of people's cars. Someone's gotta get in there and start doing something about this because this is a huge like backlash that happened from the September 11th attack, and we gotta be on there like doing what we can, now is an important time to do the work that we were doing before. So I personally came back as spokesperson for the ELF, and this is like after September 11th, and while the Patriot Act was being enacted and everything, and I still came out, you know, and said, as a matter of fact, I came out with just no holds barred at that point. Anytime there was an ELF action, I, I didn't even walk the line that I was supposed to walk as an ELF spokesperson saying like, well, we believe in nonviolence only. I wouldn't even say that. I can, at that point, I came out and said like, yeah, ELF burnt this building down, and you can call it violent if you want, I don't really care. You know, we're gonna do whatever it takes to do to win liberation, because we're, we're struggling, and that's, and that's what it's all about. And we're not gonna condemn other people who, who uh, resorted to violent tactics, because that's their struggle, that's their fight, and that's the way they wanna do it, and it's only up to them to choose it. So, at that point, that was my stance, and that went on for a while until I felt like, you know, some of the September 11th stuff died down, and then I, you know, went back to working on the Sarissa stuff that I'm working on now. I don't even know where I'm 
going with this. But, um, <laughs> but the reality, I guess, is that, you know, there's going to be state repression. And we can all come to a conference like this, and there's going to be, people can worry. I know so many, like, liberals that are so stuck in their thing, and they're like, they think the feds are going to come for them because they're organizing, like, a bank sale. And it's ridiculous. You know, and the feds come for you when you keep living. I never, you know, I never got sent to prison. Like, you can do it, you know, and you might get sent up to prison, and you might get framed. I mean, that happened before September 11th, that's happening after, you know. But the reality is, if we don't do something, then there's going to be nothing happening. And it's so basic. It's so simple. You, you, you got to go out there and do what you got to do to change the system. And, you know, if you're breaking the law, more power to you, you know. Then break the law and do it right. Get away with it. You know, that's what it's going to take that. Every, every struggle has taken that, right? Every, every liberation struggle has taken that. We're, we're, we're looking at a movement now. I was representing the environmental movement, and uh, the most radical thing that was going on before ELF was locking yourself to some bulldozer or something. That's going nowhere, for real. That's going nowhere. Like, that's going to get you some media attention, and that's it. You look at liberation struggles throughout history, the ones that have won revolutions, have won people liberation, and, and people have to die. They have to get killed. They have to kill. You know, they have to overthrow systems, you have to fight to win. And that's what there is to it. You know, there's going to be people going to jail. There's going to be people uh, losing their loved ones. There's going to be people, uh, you know, breaking down and crying and stuff. And this is going to hurt. And, and, but you've got to go through that to get to the other side. And we cannot be stared off of this whole thing because we think that, oh, well, now there's this Patriot Act. Now there's two minutes left. Now we've got, like, all these other oppressions against us and so forth. Like, you got to keep fighting. You got to keep fighting. If you're not fighting, then nothing's happening. And that's, I guess, all I really have to say at this point. I've gone through some, you know, oppression, some state oppression, whatever they want to call it. You know, I've had experienced two raids by the FBI. I've avoided a number of subpoenas, uh, you know, and all this other stuff. But like, it's nothing. I hate talking about it. I hate like I hate saying anything about it because it just scares people to get involved in stuff. You know, before this whole thing, I was just another like I was just another person. You know, and I'm still just a regular person. There's nothing special about me at all. But when I was on television, I was representing uh, the number one domestic terrorist threat to the United States at that point. You know, I, for that opportunity to say something that people need to hear, to wake people up, to inspire all these youth to believe in something, to fight back, I would have, you know, gone through way ten times as many as much oppression. Like that's just what there is to it. What are we gonna do? You know, as a people, are we gonna Keep on keeping on what we're doing, you know, go to work, go to school, you know, go to the retirement home, go to the grave. Or are we gonna are we gonna, you know, fight for freedom? Are we gonna stand up and do something else? Are we gonna struggle? Are we gonna fight back? Are we gonna really work to change the system? And so it's it's a something you have to accept if you're gonna fight, is that there's gonna be pain, there's gonna be suffering, there's gonna be oppression. But in case you haven't looked around, like that's been that's been going on since we've been born. You know, there's been pain and suffering and oppression and struggle since we were born, since the day I was brought, you know, to, to this earth. And if we don't do something about it, it sure as hell ain't getting better.